So in our last video called wholeness, we looked at how the contrasts within nature, contrasts such as mind and matter, or in more religious terminology, the, the language of spirit uh, and the physical reality, how they can be understood as being part uh, of a whole, that they're not so separate that they cannot influence one another. And in particular, we started considering one of the attempts to understand the nature of reality that were, was began by Plato, the idea that the, the, the most real constituents of reality is what he would call substances and that relationships are basically additional or accidental attributes to these substances. And we explored that idea further and showed that actually relationship is the most primary reality, that, that there is no substance, that, that nothing can become or be what it is without relationship. So today I want to take that thought a bit further. And we again going to consider these two um, aspects of reality, the material and the mind-like aspects. So let's begin with the material side of it. There are some who believe that all there is to reality is physical, material entities that interact with one another according to predetermined laws. So, for instance, um, materialistic determinism. It's a world view that says all that exists are physical entities and their relationships with one another can be calculated and can be determined by these very stable natural laws. And they believe in that to such an extent that some of them even deny the existence of qualities such as freedom, qualities such as choice, uh, possibility, um, consciousness, they reduce that phenomena to chemical reactions within the brain. So that's one extreme uh, view of the physical side. Then there's another view that says, now what is primary and what is more real than the physical are these mind-like qualities, that nothing exists without consciousness without mind that the very possibility of the existence of stuff must originate somewhere and uh, they identify that somewhere as a mind-like consciousness whether they call it God or anything else for them consciousness is primary and more real than the physical. Today, I want to consider another way of viewing that interaction between the mind-like qualities within our reality and the physical qualities within our reality. Um, and I'm going to introduce another word here, a word that I think helps us to understand this unity, and that's the word experience. Now, for humans, <laughs> obviously we understand the meaning of the word experience in the context of human experience. The fact that we are able to feel the influence of our world, we experience both the external um, connections with, with our world, but also an interior 
world of considering possibilities of imagination that is our experience as humans and Descartes w was famous for saying that humans are the only beings who have experience but I'm sure many of you who have pets <laughs> if you have a dog or a cat or a bird you would probably disagree you'd probably say no I think my pet has experiences as well it might not be the same kind of experience that we have but we can differentiate between the, the, the animal being excited, being fearful, being happy, etc. There are influences that impact the uh, animal's experience of reality. And animal uh, ethnologists have uh, developed all kinds of experiments to actually prove it. Dolphins, um, even as far down as bees have a form of experience. Biologists have taken this further and said that um, uh, procreatic uh, cells uh, have, um, bacteria have got a form of decision making and experience. So how far down does experience go and what do we mean by the word experience. The philosopher Alfred North Whitehead suggested that any entity that has both external and internal relationships has a form of experience. Now what we mean by internal relations um, uh, and this has been, you know, affirmed by quantum physicists who, who looks at the smallest particles of existence and says there, there's more that's going on than simply external influences that determines how a particle, a quark, an atom, how it reacts. That there's something they call waves of possibility and so what white it suggests is whenever you have an entity that has both external experiences and influences and also an internal organization by which decisions has to be made between what possibilities to actualize and what possibilities to cut off or in quantum physics language, the, 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 the quantum field of possibility collapses and only one possibility is actually realized. That process of unification, that process by which all the influences are felt, interpreted and unified into a next moment of unity that is subjectivity. There, there's a form of experience that's happening there. That is not suggesting that everything is conscious or everything has the same form of consciousness, but rather that there is mind-like qualities in all of reality, even to a atomic or small, the smallest particles of reality has mind-like qualities to it. Now obviously these, um, these entities can combine, can, can be compounded, atoms come together for molecules, molecules for more complex compounds, eventually a cell for instance is a individual unit that has its own decision-making capacities. So there's a, a form of mind, possibility, freedom present within these <clears throat> compound individuals. Obviously lots of cells forms a body. <laughs> That's another kind of entity, unity that has its own ability to make decisions. So, 
how does this influence our understanding of reality? I think it's a beautiful way of seeing that instead of giving material the ultimate preference that uh, that explains everything or giving consciousness the ultimate as the ultimate reality that explains material existence and kind of separating those two so far apart that we don't know how they interact what white it helped us to do is to see a unity where both mind-like and material qualities are equally mysterious are equally beautiful and um, and they intertwined they they are part of the fabric of reality and that overcomes a lot of problems between having to explain one in the terms of the other when when there's a unity when mind like decision making qualities are part of the fabric of reality that overcomes a lot of the difficulties that we've had in explaining how consciousness emerges from material or trying to explain how material emerges from consciousness we can now actually see that both these qualities have always been part of reality and so experience goes all the way down mind like qualities are part of nature um, now to, today we looked at the meaning of experience at, at another way of bringing this dualistic understanding of mind and matter closer together we can still speak of different aspects of reality of course we can differentiate between external material influences and internal mental like decision making capacities but we're speaking about different aspects of the same reality it's not dividing them so much that we have difficulty explaining how they connect um, in the next session we're going to start looking at the experience of meaning so today we looked at, at the meaning of experience and then we're going to look at the um, the meaning the, the experience of meaning uh, this is just one more way of of uh, one more perspective of entering into the wonder of what makes you you what makes this world this world A and another perspective that I believe can enrich our experience of our world. Bye-bye.